Hey everyone, how's it going? Today, I really wanted to talk about grief, um, uh, specifically crippling grief. I've seen a lot of comments and people are mentioning that they are like fully consumed by their grief. They're having days of tears and like just that no one understands and um, like that feeling of, you know, being punched in the gut just over and over and just constantly feeling that that emptiness that hole that void whatever you want to call it um to the point where you just need to be in the fetal position for hours on end and my experience already is grief can be so crippling it can be so consuming it can take us away from everything we have, everything we are. And as I was reading all of these different comments about other people and trying to get through it and six years down the road, still feeling 100% empty, um, like that void hasn't changed. and and. I'm not a grief counselor. I'm not a counselor of any type. I am also new to grief and losing someone so close to me. And I am no one to tell anybody how to grieve. And that's not, that's not my intent here. My, my hope from talking about this is that people are able to see that Yes, grief can be consuming. Yes, it can completely take over and take hold. Um, and that we as individuals can also take back power from that grief. Like, grief is a powerful, powerful thing. And somebody made a really nice comment, just a very, very clear, simple, straight to the point. Grief is not just sadness. And that's true. It's not. Grief is all of it. It's, it's, losing someone and everything that comes with it it is feeling all of the emotions at one time and it's really really hard to look at what we've lost and see beyond that and see our life especially when it's somebody that is so near and dear to us family member like best friends um a child parent grandparent you know there's anybody that is really close to you losing them means you will never ever do those things with that person again and it sucks like really 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 sucks but for me and my family We know that. We are two weeks out from the biggest loss of our life, losing Sarah. Two weeks, a little more than two weeks. And I made a promise to Sarah early on, and I feel like we can make promises to people that we love and loved, people that we have here and have lost, we can make a promise anytime. And I was fortunate that we knew Sarah's path for six years. We hoped for different, but we knew that there was a good chance that melanoma was going to kill her. And we were really, really hoping that that cancer was going to kill her 60 years down the road, not six years. Um, but we were fortunate in the fact that we got to make these promises face to face. And I got to promise, Sarah, that we would be sad and we will remember her. And I'll make sure, and I promised over and over every day in those last two weeks that her kids would know who she is, that her kids would know she loves them. And I told her that they loved her as well. But these promises that we make give us purpose. 
And like I said, we can make a promise anytime. I can make promises to Sarah now still. And that gives me purpose. And so we made promises. I made promises that the kids are going to know their mommy. That they're going to know that they were loved by their mommy. That they are loved by their mommy. That they're going to know her and see her pictures and videos and know what she was about. And they're going to have her in their heart. I also promise to keep alive her message of kindness and, and making good choices. And I, I promise that we would continue doing what she's built. We would continue, and not just her, you guys. This, this YouTube thing wasn't just Sarah. It was our family. We started out doing a family thing. She kind of separated out to do her own thing with us um, to help boost Brayden's chances of success later. And so we promised to continue that legacy. And here we are doing that. We have purpose. And so one thing that I think is helpful in making it so grief doesn't have to be crippling is to find purpose. And for me, having that purpose associated with Sarah and for Brayden having it associated with Sarah is really helpful. It, it gives us goals that we can achieve that mommy would be proud of. And it makes it so, yeah, I'm going to go cry. Yeah, I'm going to go through my box of Sarah stuff and just like weep like a baby. I did that the other night. I just wept like a baby. Um, just to read the words that she had, had written me when, when we were, you know, just starting our relationship 19 years ago. We had just started and, and just these amazing kind words and silly questions and getting to know each other and all things that we did back then that we didn't ever have to do again. And I went back and I read them and I, I, I cried and I, I felt sad doesn't have to be crippling because I also felt happy. I was so happy that I had those memories. I was so happy that I had those notes. I was so happy that I could think back to these little things that we did. Not just the big things, but the little things, you know? Grief is freaking hard. And not everybody has the same situation. Not everybody has that little box of mementos or pictures or videos or any of that kind of stuff. And that's okay. Use your memories. And it's okay to make memories. <laughs> we are a family that lives in the now. And we always have. We've always been right now, right here. And I think it's really a positive thing, but it also makes it hard to like, go back to memories. It's really hard for me. Like having pictures is what sparks memories for me really well. I have some big ones, but having those littler memories, I need something. I need some kind of object to really spark those. And that's okay, right? Grief is, I think, the hardest thing I'm going to ever do in my life. And I hope this is the hardest time. Um, because it can be crippling. And I, I, there's people that have lost, you know, a child, a spouse, and a grandparent all in the same month. There's, and it's so easy to let it consume us. It really is. So I think it's our job, one, if it's consuming us, to find a community, a support group, a counselor, to find somewhere to find meaning, to be able to just share, to talk about it, to get it out. Also to find people that nobody has the same situation. Everybody's situation is different. Even if it was same scenario, situation is different. Our hearts are all different. Our emotions are, diff are different. But finding somebody that can Feel the pain with you is helpful. 
Finding somebody that's gone through a similar situation is helpful. And, you know, not everybody does need a support group. Not everybody does need counseling. Not everybody needs to talk on YouTube. Not everybody needs a group. It's individual. And that's okay. But if you are finding that your grief is all-consuming, I hope you choose to reach out to someone. Um, reach out to a group. Our Discord server, no joke, is my support group. And then I have my counselor. And then I have this, where I just spout stuff out. So support is important, I think, for most people. And, and like I said, if it doesn't have to be crippling. Um, I think it's up to us to, and I don't want to say, like, it, it's up to us to stop it from being crippling. It's up to us to get the help because help often doesn't come find us. Um, usually we need to seek it out and, and you know, it's kind of crazy, but we have to do the work even when we are feeling all these feelings. And sometimes it's hard to see outside of ourselves and see that we need the help. But if you are writing a comment, for example, that says it's all consuming, one, that's you reaching out for help. So thank you for doing that. Two, look in the description of this video and go join that Discord. If you don't know how, click on the link and your screen's gonna go, ah! and it's going to try and download the app or something and, and join it because we have a lot of people in our community that are having all kinds of different issues and that are there to support each other and it's beautiful i go there all the time i it it makes me sad it makes me sad to hear that there's people alone and i want to be there for you guys as well i appreciate everybody being there for me and and each other um, but I'm here for you too and so if you are feeling like you are getting sucker punched in the gut just over and over and over and over and it's never ending there's others of us that kind of feel the same way and we want to help you too so um, if you're able to join our discord go for it if not keep dropping comments the busier the comments get the less I see and hopefully other community members will see it too but we're all here to help each other out. And I just, I saw all these comments about how uncontrollable some of this grief is for people. And like I said, I'm not a counselor, but I'm here for you guys. And I appreciate you coming out and sharing in the comments. And, and I, uh, I hope that these videos are helping you to kind of get through some of that. Just like Sarah's videos are helping, still helping people that have cancer, that are going through dealing with cancer and treatment, and people that are supporting and caretaking. So, yeah, I really, really hope that this is going to help you guys have a wonderful day, morning, night, wherever you are. And in Sarah's amazing words, be kind and make good choices. Bye.